Windows-based handhelds are a technological marvel. The ability to play your PC games wherever you are is nothing short of magical. But you know what doesn't feel like magic? Wrestling with Windows itself to play those games. It's no secret that Windows wasn't designed to be navigated with a controller or even a touchscreen really. Luckily for us though, we have people smarter than me to solve these issues and create what we call front end. To take our game libraries and make them easily accessible with a controller and or touch. In fact, we have a plethora of options to solve this problem that all vary in the level of customization that they allow. And with that comes level of complexity. So today I've taken it upon myself to show you three different setup for front ends to make using your PC handheld that much easier and enjoyable. We'll start off with the easiest and then we'll work our way up in complexity. First, the easiest option is just using whatever front end is built in with your device. So for me with the ROG Ally X, it's just using Armory Crate, which is actually kind of good in my opinion. It lacks a little in the customizability department, but as a launching point for your games, it just kind of works. It's super easy to navigate, having one tab for your games and then another for your game platforms like Steam and Xbox. And since it's purpose built for being a front end for your ally, there's some handy quality of life things that Asus has added to make saying details at a glance super easy. I'm personally a fan of the fact that in the thumbnails in the games tab, it shows you under which game platform this game is installed. We also have the ability to add any game launcher or game to Armory Crate. I went over this process in the setup guide, but it's literally as easy as installing the launcher, then pressing select to manage the library and then add game slash app to library. Asus has also added a couple of advanced features that can be pretty powerful if you choose to take advantage of them. Now, this is something that the Steam Deck does by default, I'm pretty sure, but you can access game options by pressing X and in here you can go into set game profile. And then in here is where the magic happens. You can customize your controller mapping per game, which could come in handy if you're someone who likes to tinker and dial in each individual setting for everything. I'm not that much of a tinkerer, and go that deep, but there are some options I have messed around with in the configuration tab. Here, you can assign operating mode per game for plugged in and handheld mode. This isn't entirely necessary, but it is a definitely a quality of life improvement rather than having to change your TDP settings every time you decide to change games. Another feature I'm a huge fan of is only available when you change the library view to list. Armory Crate keeps track of the time played of your games, kind of like Steam does, but the major difference that makes this cool is that the time tracked is actually what has been played on the Ally X itself. Customization in the aesthetics department is where Armory Crate falls flat in my opinion. We're able to change between a horizontal scroll or a vertical scroll, change the size of the thumbnails, blur and darken the background, but that's about it. Another thing I'm not a fan of is the process in which you have to install games on Armory Crate. You have to open each individual game launcher and then download the games through there. I don't particularly like this because it forces us to interact with Windows and use desktop controls, which can be a little bit janky, especially with Steam, which I found decides to randomly open itself in big picture mode. That and the Xbox app just sucks to navigate. Setting Armory Crate to launch by standard is pretty easy since it does that as a standard with the Ally X. But if your settings have changed, you can make it launch and start up by going into general in the settings tab and then to about and then checking Armory Crate SE launch automatically. Overall, it's simple, lets you get to all your system settings super easy and displays your games in an easy to navigate way, but also has enough advanced options for you to tinker and tune your gaming experience exactly the way that you want it. Unfortunately though, each configuration of Armory Crate will look pretty much exactly the same and it doesn't stop us from having to use the Xbox app or Steam to install our games. In saying that though, there's little to no setup involved, just log in and download your games and you're off to the races. Speaking of Steam, that's actually going to be our next front end to talk about, specifically Steam big picture. This one right here is probably the perfect and only front end you would need on your device if the majority of your games are on Steam with maybe a handful of others from other game platforms, as well as allowing for emulation and ROMs by using Emulator. Probably the one I should be using, but I like to tinker with my devices sometimes a little bit more than I like playing games. Steam Big Picture is essentially the front end that Valve uses on the Steam Deck and has been available for a long time on desktop. Since it's used on the Steam Deck though, Valve has done a lot of work to make sure it's a great experience on handhelds. Navigation is intended to be used with a controller, so using the touchscreen isn't necessary, but the icons are big enough if you do so choose to do that. Valve is constantly pushing updates to Steam, so the quality of life there is quite high. The home screen is organized in such a way that makes getting into your games as 
painless as it can be. Having all your most recently played games displayed right in front of you in a horizontal scrolling list and having access to news, your friends, and a handy recommended tab to help you choose what to play next from your library just down below. Another thing that can be accessed from the recommended tab is the discovery queue. For those of you who aren't familiar with the discovery tool, it's a personalized list of games that Steam thinks you might like. Steam curates this list for you based off of what's new, top selling games, and games that are similar to what you're playing already on Steam. From here, as you go through your queue, looking at new games, you can choose to either wish list anything that you might find interesting or purchase them directly. Or if looking through a curated list of games isn't your thing, you can go directly to the Steam store through the store tab. Since we're using the Steam ecosystem here directly, you'll get notifications for when your wishlisted games go on sale and you won't have to worry about missing any crazy deals that happen on Steam. Which, if you ask me, is the perfect way to go about purchasing games on PC. I'm sure you already have an ever-increasing backlog of games that you need to play and finish, so I highly recommend adding games to your wishlist and then just waiting for them to go on sale, which they inevitably will, to purchase them. If you want to have a look through your backlog, Steam Big Picture also allows you to easily browse your existing library through the dedicated library page, letting you view some important categories such as controller supported, already installed, your favorites, and your entire library as a whole. The collections tab is where I want to focus this quick section though. In here, you may already have some collections set up from your desktop, but if you press X for filter, you can set up more dynamic collections to help organize and choose the games you want to play. You want to find all your single player games? You can do that. All your puzzle games? Yep, that too. So long as you save them as a dynamic collection, you'll be able to see them as an option in the collections tab. And as an obvious aside, but something Armory Crate can't do, you can install your games directly here without having to launch a separate application. Steam also has the ability to add other games to your library if you happen to have games from other launches installed. To do this, just go back to the desktop view by going by power in the side menu. I just get to this by pressing B a bunch of times. Then once you're back in desktop Steam, just go to the plus on the bottom left of the window and click on add an on-Steam game. Then just search for your installed games there and they should pop up back in big picture mode to conveniently open there. Finally is the aesthetic customizability, which again is a bit lackluster. You can't do anything to change the layout nor the backgrounds or icons. But in saying that, I think Valve has done a good job in, with the design of big picture where it's still aesthetically pleasing to the eye. The background changes as you scroll through your games, as well as the thumbnail and box art, seeing as the furthest left or the most recent played game will get a wider thumbnail and then the rest will be box arts and that'll change as you play different games. The only thing that we can customize and change ourselves is the startup movie, which we can do by going into the settings menu by scrolling down to customization, your own videos, as far as I'm aware in big picture. A downside to this point though, is we are relegated to only using the startup movies we can get on the point shop through Steam and not allowed unlimited choice by making or downloading your own videos as far as I'm aware in big picture. The point store does allow you to buy special profile decorations and startup movies, but getting the points is a bit of an annoyance since the only way to get them is by buying games on Steam, which you will technically already be doing and participating in the Steam community. Steam is a great way to organize your library if it's the main platform you use to buy your games. It allows you to easily purchase, download and play all your games all within the same application and it works beautifully with a controller. Unfortunately, customization isn't the best again, but if you want something that looks good, work, and is easy to navigate, this is the way to go. This one right here is one of the most powerful front ends I have ever used. You can decide to run this one in full screen mode for a controller friendly experience, or if you want to run this on your PC with a mouse and keyboard, you can also do that with desktop. The options for customization here are almost limitless. There are too many different plugins to manage your game info to even mention. Playnight also has the ability to display and manage your game libraries from almost all of the available apps out there. Personally, I've got Steam, Xbox, Battle.net, and Epic configured, but man, once you find a theme that you like, this app is beautiful. I don't even know where to begin this one as even I myself have only just begun to dip my toes into the ocean that is Playnite. With that being said though, it's a purpose-built front end for your PC games. And with integration for various different game platforms like I mentioned before. And with plugins, you can give it access to Xbox Game Pass if you pay for that subscription as well. I can't speak much really on navigation and the look of Playnight as in general but I'll talk about the experience and the setup that I've made for myself. I guess the most appropriate thing to talk about first would be the setup process. 
base play night itself is super straightforward to set up. Just download the installer from the website, add the plugins for your game platforms, then log in and authenticate them, and then that's about it. Once the app itself opens, it'll aggregate all your games from each platform, then do a metadata download. Then comes the more complicated part, which is downloading your themes and add-ons. I personally started with the theme that I wanted to go with because each individual theme is going to have different add-ons that they support and are required for it to display itself properly. I downloaded and tested a bunch of themes before I landed on the one that I decided to like stick with. And to be honest, I might end up chopping and changing the theme that I use kind of like I do with my emulation handholds, like on Android with Emulation Station. I change my theme on that all the time and I might end up doing the same with this purely because I like having like a fresh design to like get me to play my device a little bit more often. The theme I landed on for now is Aniki Remake. Um, mostly because it boasted its customizability and I like the look of it. I know, it's deep, am I right? After you've chosen your theme, I highly recommend clicking on the GitHub link in the description since here it will tell you what other add-ons are required for your theme to work as well as other settings you might need to change for them to function properly. After that, you will probably have to re-download some or all of your metadata. Once everything is set up though, the experience is fantastic. It's very reminiscent of Emulation Station on retro handhelds. And I personally like having everything look the way that I want it to. Navigation on the theme that I chose works wonderfully. I can add filters to find specific games that I might want to play. The experience itself is immersive where I can see game details like ratings, description, and even a mini trailer playing to see what each game is about. Just a side note on that, why would I want to see trailers for games that I already know? I don't know, but it looks nice. Launching the games works wonderfully and you can install games from Steam or your other platforms just as easily as in Big Picture, with the exception that it will open up the app, but it's just a confirmation and then you can go straight back to Play Night. I'm sure there is so much more to tinker with, but right now it's set up to a point where I won't need to touch it again unless I get that urge for a fresh theme or to tinker with other add-ons. Play Night seems extremely powerful and I feel like I've only just waded into the shallows of what must be a vast ocean with what the community is doing with it. Like plugins are being made every day and the ones that are already there are being updated fairly regularly from what I've seen. In saying that though, if you guys want a more in-depth guide of how I set up my specific instance of Play Night, make sure you let me know down below. Speaking of commenting down below, make sure you guys like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more from me. I also want to let you guys know that I've got some more exciting stuff on the way. I've ordered myself a dbrand kill switch, which is finally landed in Australia, so that shouldn't be too far away, which I would love to get my hands on that and do a quick review of that. Um, I've also gotten a trim UI brick ordered from PowerKitty, which is like this other little retro emulation device, which I want to do a review and setup guide for as well, because I'm really interested to play with Crossmix, which if you're in the emulation kind of niche, I'm sure you've heard of. Down below in the description, I've added a link to Coffee. If you feel so inclined to support this channel and help me get my hands on cool, new, interesting tech. Otherwise, just keep watching the videos, liking, subscribing, all of that helps. Share the videos with your friends if you liked it. Every little thing helps and it's very much appreciated. Um, that's it, another video done and dusted. Hopefully I've helped make up your mind and which kind of way you wanna go with these front end setups. Either that or I've made your life 10 times harder, but either way you want to decide to go with this, um, of the three options, all of them will help you not have to deal with Windows and get in, play your games, do what these devices were made to do. But anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.